Hey everyone, Keith Rogers with DesktopLays.com here. This time with a quick tutorial on turning and facing operations on the TIG lathe. I'm also testing out a new camera setup, so let me know what you think in the comments or feel free to message direct. Remember to subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. So in my previous video on machining soft jaws, I prepared the soft jaws for holding stock concentric with the spindle. I'm going to use that same setup to demonstrate how to use the stock tool bits to perform basic turning and facing cuts. So let's get started. Okay, so I've set up the one inch bar stock in the three jaw chuck. And this first cut is gonna be a facing cut. I've got a left hand tool located in the tool post and I'm gonna machine from outside to inside. Uh, you can do the opposite. In fact, I think that's recommended, um, but uh, not knowing where the center is exactly at this point, uh, we'll do it this way. All right, so the first thing we need to do uh, with this rough cut stock, we need to make sure that we're uh, not gonna take too deep of a cut in some areas that the tool can't handle. So we're gonna find those high spots by hand turning the stock and finding wherever it's highest at. This is actually a pretty evenly cut piece of stock. So I'm just gonna start right there. Now I've locked the carriage and I'm going to be moving the cross slide. In general, you want to lock whichever axis you're not going to be using. So uh, we're going to be using the cross slide in this direction. Uh, it's referred to as the X axis and our Z axis, which is along this direction, is going to be locked. I've got it set for uh, the lowest speed and we're going to power it up. Okay, I'm just going to slowly feed this uh, and we might not actually cut very much on this first pass. We'll get just a little bit at the beginning. Okay, it looks about like center. You guys will probably be able to tell better from above on the camera there. Unlock the carriage and I'm just going to hand feed a small amount. and then lock it and proceed again. Now this time we'll be able to tell when we get to the center because we can visually see the stock removed. And on this pass, so as not to leave tool marks, I'm going to unlock, take it out, bring it back. And if I wanted to do another pass, I probably would have not worried about uh, doing that. So let's see what the finish looks like. And we've got this little nub here. Uh, oftentimes if the tool is not perfectly on center, uh, you'll get a small nub and that can be corrected if you if you like to really nail it down you can shim your tool uh, with a little shim stock underneath here but I'm just going to touch it with a file uh, now that we've got uh, the facing cut completed we know that this surface is perfectly perpendicular to the spindle axis or you might say the other way around. The spindle axis is now perfectly perpendicular to this surface. Uh, so uh, next I'm going to break those sharp edges just to show um, a quick way you can do that without having to change your tooling setup. Just take a file, carefully bring it in on the edge. That's all there is to it. So we removed enough here that it's not going to cut me uh, or you know catch a burr. Aluminum is pretty soft and it's actually difficult to cut yourself with aluminum but with steel uh, that's a real concern. So next we'll do a turning operation and for that we need to change the tool post setup.
with the TIG, the tool post is just one bolt, or in this case a socket head cap screw, and you can orient the tool post any which way you like. And the right and the left hand tool are both symmetric, so we want this point to be in the direction that we're going to cut. So this is a single point cutting tool, so we want this point, if we're going to make a pass in this direction, uh, from right to left, if we're looking at the tool, that makes this a right hand cutting tool. If we were to, gonna, if we were going to go from the spindle towards the, the tailstock in this direction, uh, that would make this a left hand cutting tool. And you can remember that by looking at the cutting tool and just observing which side the point is on, your left hand side or your right hand side. So we're going to set this up as a right hand cutting tool. Now the angle is not too critical as long as we don't set it up so that this relief angle is uh, performing some sort of rubbing on the, uh, the work. And the next thing we want to do is set the depth so we don't end up crashing the machine. So the depth stop here allows us to set that prior to performing our turning operation and check for clearance, make sure our tool post won't be hit by the jaws or something like that. So I'll just pick a random depth here, lock the carriage. This allows me to push this 3 16th, it's just a piece of 3 16th uh, uh, bar stock. And it's locked in place with a set screw on the spindle. Now we can unlock our carriage and we can do our turning passes without worrying about changing the distance we're going or running into the uh, running into the jaws. Okay, so like before we need to find our high point, we'll slowly turn our cross slide dial until we start making contact. So right about there is where we're hitting and we're not hitting on this side and there we go. So now let's go make sure that the rest of the stock is the same. And with this we can be pretty confident so that there's not a lot of stock here. So Okay, so we'll make that our first pass. Uh, so this time we want to lock the cross slide. And we can do that with this small set screw here. That presses the brass gib up against the dovetail, locks it in place. So there may be some play here. Uh, that's just backlash. We're not actually moving it. So once that's locked in place, start the motor and take our first pass. Now if this is a roughing pass, often you can do this by hand, or you can turn it by hand slowly uh, if you don't have a power feed um, option. But the power feed is pretty nice. It allows you to uh, simply hold the carriage wheel in place, put your thumb against the wheel and the carriage, and that pulls and draws the carriage using a lead screw under here that's uh, being driven by the spindle. And with the power feed, I can feel the wheel press quite a bit harder against my thumb, so I know I've bottomed out on the depth stop. Okay, we can see that the material has been machined partially, but not fully. So now that we've got that first uh, that first pass down, we can take a, a, an additional amount of material off and try to catch the rest there. So what we want to do before we unlock is uh, we want to find that backlash. So right now we're bottoming out at about the number 15. So we'll unlock it. 
back off of the material, back away, go back to the 15 mark, and then we're going to decide how much more material we want to remove. So let's say we're going to take uh, an additional, let's, ta let's take uh, another full 10 thousandths, which would be 20 thousandths diameter. So we'll go to the 20 and then to the 25 mark. We lock the tops or lock the cross slide and do it again. We can see this time with um, at least on one side of the stock, we're taking uh, um, at least 10,000 step to cut. On the other side, it's a little lighter, but it looks like we're getting a full cut across the whole diameter at this on this one. I can feel the power feed pushing on my thumb, so I know we bottomed out. I can also see it. Turn the motor off. And again, we'll do the same routine to take a, an additional pass to remove however much material we need to. Now that we've trued the stock, we can measure it and, um, and then calculate our, our desired reduction in diameter. And using the cross slide dial, we can determine how far we need to go and get pretty close. So we're at the number 25, unlock the cross slide, back off the material, move away, back to the 25 mark, and then decide where we want to go from there to achieve our, our desired diameter. Okay, that's all for this one. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more of these videos. Also, let me know if you have any ideas for things you'd like me to cover in future videos. I have several tutorials and some machining projects coming up. Until then, happy machining.